We are once again traveling through the mountains to find some spooky stories that we haven't heard before. Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. It's good to see you made it back for another episode. Today I'm going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true horror stories from the Sierra Nevada mountain range. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future video, whether it's from the Sierra Nevada mountains or another mountain range, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. Now, without further ado, let's get into these creepy and allegedly true Sierra Nevada's horror stories. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, it's been one hell of a year. And personally, I feel like I've aged 12 years over the last 12 months. And if you're anything like me, you're feeling your age more than you used to, especially in other areas of your life. It's time to snap out of it. Spring is here and it's time to get sprung with Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online. So, if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And better yet, we've got a special deal for Swamp Dweller listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use promo code SWAMPED at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code SWAMPED, to receive your first month free. And we thank BlueChew for sponsoring the podcast. Hey, Swamp Dweller. I never thought I'd be telling one of my stories to YouTube. I truly feel that this story, as well as others I'm willing to share, will be right at home here in the swamp. My name is Eric. My most recent unusual encounter happened in the summer of 2020. I took a solo hiking and camping trip with my dog in the California Sierras, about 30 miles southwest of Donner Lake. Nina is a four-year-old 65-pound German Shepherd pit bull mix with an attitude. I'm a 33-year-old man standing six foot tall and 175 pounds. I am a genuinely nice person most of the time, but I did grow up in a tough environment and therefore take physical fitness and self-defense very seriously. I am also no stranger to the supernatural. I was a follower of scientism until I witnessed something, a story for a different time, when I was 12 years old. Since then, I knew there was more out there. My mother and I live in the same county, so I asked her just to drop me off at the exit of the 80 freeway not too far from Gold Run. I found the path I was going to start out and started hiking. Within 30 minutes of walking, I saw maybe three or five people, normal family type kind of stuff, you know, nothing crazy. But then, I saw someone that was out of place. To say the least, it was odd. It was a large, shirtless man, wearing shorts, boots, and a gas mask. He was in his mid to late 30s if I had to guess, and had prison tattoos and a shaved head. He was walking normally, and said something to me along the lines of, Nice dog. At least, I think that's what it was. It was really hard to hear him behind a gas mask, as you can imagine. At the time, I only brought my bear spray and my fixed K-bar knife with a 7-inch blade for protection. I did not feel threatened, but was watching him closely as well as my dog because she can read situations like a pro and is super protective over me. As we walked past each other, I just nodded and smiled. I do not think this had anything to do with what happened later when it got dark the same night, but it was just such an unusual thing to witness, I thought it would be worth mentioning. Another thing about me is that I almost never hike on trails. Sometimes at the beginning of a journey, I will start an actual path, 
but I pretty much always stray off the path in pursuit of exploring places visited less by humans. I have gotten about 10 ticks on different occasions, and a bunch of other uncomfortable and itchy pests and plants, but I just like to be away from people and do my own thing. I had a rough go on this hike. It was hot and very steep terrain. I pushed myself and my dog a bit too far. After I had been hiking for about four hours, I stopped to set up a shelter for the night because I knew it was going to be getting dark in about two hours. As I was setting up my tarp and paracord shelter, I noticed my dog appeared to not want to move very much, which is very much out of character for her. I figured something was wrong and sure enough, two of her paws got cut up bad. She was bleeding. I think it was from the sharp rocks, but I am not too sure. Either way, I had to figure out what to do. After a few seconds, I knew I should ask my mom to pick us up that night. That meant a hike all the way back to where I started. My legs were sore from carrying my backpack weighing about 30 pounds with my tarp and sleeping bag, food, and water, and of course other survival stuff. But I love my dog more than pretty much anything, or anyone, so it had to be done. I knew her feet would be much sore the following morning, and I did not want to do that to her. On the way back, I was pushing her too hard once again. The sun was going down and I was only about halfway back when my legs began to cramp up periodically. Very bad. Soon, after the cramps were getting to the point where my legs were just giving out, I knew I had to rest them for the night. Now, it is dark. I found a clearing that was not flat but not terribly steep either. For shelter, I just put my tarp on the ground in between two trees. I was far too fatigued to be picky. Everything in the area was dry. Way too dry for a fire, even if I had the energy to make one. And there were dead leaves everywhere around me. It was still warm. I am an exceptionally light sleeper as well. Any unusual or out of place sound will have me awake and alert in an instant. On this night, I had trouble getting into a deep sleep. So I was semi-conscious with my dog right up against me. My dog and I were resting peacefully. No wind, no leaves crunching or anything. Suddenly... I'm being ambushed by a predator, something big and fast. It seemed to just appear from nowhere and began running full speed at me from about 12 feet away. Too fast, too aggressive, I could feel its bloodlust for me. I could feel that I was the target. Me and my dog were immediately on guard at the same time. I popped up to a sitting position with my knife in my hand. My dog charged this thing with all her might before her lease reached its limit. It got about 5 feet away from us and stopped suddenly and just vanished. Again, no leaves crunching or anything. It simply did not make any noise. It does not make any sense how it can move without making any noise. Thankfully, I always keep Nina on her leash, looped in my belt when I am sleeping in the wild, because I know she will chase animals into the forest, even if I command her not to. This creature was after me in my weakened and apparently vulnerable state. I never could see what it was. It was too dark and it happened so fast but dogs have good night vision at close distances. I know Nina saw that thing because of the rest of the night, she had her arms on my chest protecting me, with her head on a swivel at the very slightest noise. I have never seen her so concerned before, ever. I have no doubt in my mind that this being was some sort of cryptid or powerful supernatural entity. No known animal can appear and disappear suddenly without making a single noise. I have been stalked by mountain lions on three occasions, and even they make a noticeable amount of noise when creeping up in that sort of environment. Thanks for listening. I have more encounters to share, and will send them your way once I get them written down. Until then, evil feeds on fear, so in the face of darkness, you must become the light. Last year, my family went to a family reunion up in Bozeman, Montana. It was winter, and we had gone up to celebrate Thanksgiving. My grandma and grandpa lived in this house that backed up to some woods outside of town. They had a few sheep and had a small pasture where they would let them graze. My grandpa worked outside a lot, and he was an avid backpacker and had a few guns and went hunting every year when the season comes around. Let me assure you this is no creepypasta. I have never been particularly scared of any of those stupid things. I go backpacking in the Sierra Nevada mountains relatively often, and I have climbed a few of the tallest peaks in the range. 
I have always feared this though. The day before Thanksgiving, my grandpa took my dad and me out to the crazies, a mountain range about 60 miles outside of Bozeman, dead in the heart of the Sierra Nevadas. This range had always freaked my grandpa out a little, as he had found the remains of some guy who had gotten lost out there. He always tells me a spooky Native American story. When we first got there, the snow was fresh, so there was extraordinarily little sound. My dad looked really shaken up and kept saying that we should find another place to go hunt. We walked into the woods and I remember distinctly how loud the crunch of the snow was whenever we walked. A couple of hours later, my grandpa saw some big four-point buck running through the trees about a hundred yards away or so. I was very anxious because my dad was yelling about how I was going to shoot my first buck before he did. My grandpa thought that there was something off about the whole thing, as the buck looked very odd to him. Then we started to hear what sounded like voices. They were not exactly voices at first, more like a strange sound trying to impersonate what my dad was saying. It was garbled and almost demonic, but I'm not deeply religious, or have I ever been, and I do not think that demons and all that really exist. They sounded more like the sound of those cheap voice recording apps that you get for free on your phone. My grandpa took his rifle from his shoulder, and so did my dad. I was getting very scared at this moment, and I started to murmur to myself. The garbled mess imitated my nonsense, and it sounded so close. My grandpa yelled that they had rifles and that they were not afraid to use them. I guess he was trying to scare off some prankster kids who he thought was messing with us, but there were only the voices that echoed back. My grandpa fired a shot from his rifle into the woods, and there was no movement or anything, not even a single sound. There was a cracking of twigs behind us very suddenly, and my dad turned his head and screamed, Holy hell, we need to get out of here! We turned and ran away, with my dad half pulling me and half carrying me back the way we came. I was crying, but through my tears I remember seeing what looked like a man running after us. It seemed to be running through the trees, but not through, more like on the trees. I do not really know how to describe it. The man was white, whiter than the snow, but it was skinny tall and had antlers on its head. My grandfather turned around and tried to shoot it, but the bolt in his rifle jammed. We kept running until we got back to my grandpa's truck, and then we drove away back to my grandpa's house. I know the story may not really be that scary, but it has always freaked me out a ton. If anyone knows what we saw out there, please help me. I keep thinking that I hear things when I'm on my way to my house alone, and it's really starting to freak me out. Any help in the comments would be greatly appreciated. I am what you would call an avid hiker. Nature is my second home, and with little to do in the small town that I am from, the best way to have fun is to escape to the nearby Sierra Nevada mountains. I often visit Sequoia National Park and Yosemite, as they are not too far from where I live, but this story takes place in Three Rivers, California. Back in May of 2020, I and my husband were eager to get out of the house and get some fresh air as the virus had had us going stir-crazy. My mom recommended a loop trail that had many pretty features, twin lakes, wild horses, and plenty of trees. As we walked the main path, my mom's descriptions of where to go started to make less and less sense as there were many smaller trails that seemed to lead to the rivers nearby. In fear of getting lost, we stuck to the biggest path we could as we could see that best on the Google Maps. Later, we found out that we went in the opposite direction of the loop which explained why we were so lost and encountered so many horses so soon. We also found out that the road we walked was a service road, but still looped back to the beginning of the trail. Let us just say that we did not make it far enough on that path to figure that out on our own. After encountering the many landmarks my mom said we were encountered towards the end of the hike, we continued down the dirt path hoping to get home soon to enjoy our next meal. I believe it lightly sprinkled on us as we made our way back and the atmosphere was full of laughs, giggles, and a few hits off our stizzy. 
That is until we heard a gut-wrenching sound. We stopped dead in our tracks, too scared to move, but also in disbelief of what had just happened. To the left of us was the side of a mountain that formed a curved nook, almost as if God himself punched us out of the mountain. Within the nook were darkness and trees, though the kind of darkness that is too hard to accurately describe. If I did not know any better, I would think that it could have led to a cave. The bone-chilling sound that made us stop and glance over to see the terrified expression on our faces was comparable to an animal giving us a loud warning to stay back. Even the birds in the nearby trees did not want to take a chance. As after the warning, the birds scattered in every which direction. It was not a growl, not a snarl, or a neigh. It was a strong vibration from one's throat with the mouth closed, unlike any animal I have ever heard in my entire lifetime. Still to this very day, we have no clue what it was, as no animal noise we have researched was spot on to what we heard. Still frozen in our tracks and eyes locked on one another, we stood too afraid to move, too afraid to speak. Then we heard another blood-curdling moan, this time louder than the first with even more birds flying everywhere. It told us this was the last warning we would get. Not taking any more chances, we ran back the way we came for a good half mile, too scared to look back to see if this thing was even chasing us. I cannot begin to explain how terrified I was. My spine was tingling with the feeling of something with its eyes locked on you. It's a hard, hard thing to express in words. We saw some people coming towards us, and tried to warn them about what we had just experienced. Unfazed and probably too proud, they continued the path, but later on, we saw them coming the same way we did. To this day, we never go towards the service road, and have never experienced anything similar. Our best guess was a mountain lion, but no recording satisfied our appetite for the truth. If you are in the Three Rivers area, do not use the service road to loop back on Skyline Drive. And thank you to whatever it was that let us live that day. I recently took up the hobby of traveling and looking for various minerals with my fiance. On a trip we recently took, we ended up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. The spot we wanted to reach is at the end of an eight mile hike. Some points on this path are so steep that it takes you nearly 30 minutes to make even 20 feet of progress. This background information is important because on this trip my parents decided to come along as a sort of bonding experience, and upon seeing how steep the trail was, they stayed behind at the car and decided to wait for us to get back. I thank God that they waited for us. Anyways, I and my fiancé are about halfway up the mountain in this desert environment, and it started to get dark eerily fast. We are always careful to check the weather, temperatures, sunsets, legal zones, etc., so this struck us as rather odd. We pushed forward though. Eventually, we reached a point in the path that we decided to take a break at, and my fiancé stops talking suddenly mid-sentence. I look up and meet her gaze, and the look in her eyes instantly told me something was not quite right. I looked in the direction she was staring in there, Maybe a hundred yards away in the middle of the mountains is what looked like an old man, dressed in what only looked like could be a dark robe or some sort of black raggedy clothing. We could only tell it was an old man based on how this person was standing with a frail frame. Soon after, I realized what I was looking at. I noticed this person was not moving, simply stopped mid-step, walking up the mountain parallel to us. I do not know why, but my stomach dropped so fast that I almost felt lightheaded. I normally deal with weird or intense situations very well, but this guy or thing made my body react weird to its presence. It seemed as if it had noticed us staring at it or something, because I was terrified to see what looked like an old man began to stand up. I, I failed to notice that it was on its knees or hunched over, and on its thin, frail frame, it began to loom, what seemed like over six to seven feet tall. I could tell by the trees it was next to, which we had previously passed. This was no old man. 
It was so thin yet so eerily tall. A moment later, my shock and awe were interrupted by the sound of a four-wheel vehicle. I turned to see a jeep coming down the mountain slowly towards us with its headlights on, and my unbroken gaze staring at this creature, I failed to see that it had apparently gotten pitch black in what felt like only a matter of moments. The people in the jeep stopped and offered us a ride before I answered. I looked back at the creature only to see it sprinting back down the mountain, into the wilderness at an ungodly and unnatural speed. This was no old man. Skipping ahead, me and my fiancé got in the jeep, and we simply jumped in the bed of the nice couple's open-style jeep and took a ride back down. The man looked back at me and said in a gruff voice, You shouldn't be out here past dark. Weird things happen in the desert when the sun sets. My fiancé looks at me with a worried expression on her face, but I knew the man must have seen the creatures too. So, I felt that he was just referring to that thing. Whatever it was, it caused me to lose time, not even noticing the sun setting at such an alarming rate. It almost made me pass out from simply feeling its presence. I do not know what it was. I have heard stories in the area and rumors of dogs going missing, people going missing too. I don't know what I saw, but I do know there is something unnatural in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Hello Swamp Dweller, this story is from my cousin's point of view. I grew up in a family that loves the outdoors. We live in Southern California near the beautiful Sierra Nevada mountains that are almost perfect for hunting. This story happened a few years back. I went on a deer hunting trip with my dad and grandpa and a friend of mine. Our hunting took place near the Cleghorn Trail near a small town called Crestline. Now, there have been conspiracy theories of witchcraft and Satanism going on in this town. I have been hunting near it before, but never experienced anything creepy until this hunting trip. We arrived at our stop down a little way away from this town. We prepared our gear and loaded our rifles. All of us had walkie-talkies just in case we needed to communicate. We hiked all over this mountain with not much being spotted. However, maybe an hour into our hike, I hear the radio crackle to life. It was my dad who was yelling. Hey, there's a white deer running up towards you guys. Keep in mind, I'm pretty sure white deer do not exist, and if they do, they're incredibly rare. So this was a bit unnerving to me. Well, I look down the hill and sure enough, there's a pale white deer running up the mountain. But just as quick as it appears, it just vanishes, and we never see that white deer ever again. The rest of the day went uneventful after that. A few weeks later, I decided to go up this mountain alone to try to track this deer down. It was early in the morning still. It was pretty dark out. As I approach a patch of dense trees, I notice sticks hanging from the trees, almost like the Blair Witch. There were pentagrams and dolls everywhere. I was honestly a bit freaked out at this point, but I kept going as I really wanted to track this white deer down. I was totally unaware that I was walking into the direction of this town known for witchcraft. Ten minutes into my hike through these trees, I ran into an old, frail-looking lady, giving me the most hateful stare. She was in a black robe. Now the weird thing is, her eyes were two different colors. She screamed, Get out! And don't ever come back! I hightailed it out of there, ran down to my truck and sped out of there like a bat out of hell. These experiences were creepy, but it has not stopped me from loving the outdoors. I just make sure I stay the heck out of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Thanks for sharing my story, and remember, be careful out in the woods. You never know who or what you might run into. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true Sierra Nevada Mountains horror stories. I don't know about you guys, but these are some really spooky stories in my personal opinion. I love hiking out in the mountains and getting away from people, but I don't know what I would do if I ever saw some weird creatures or weird people like these guys did. If you enjoyed these stories, be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this episode gets, the more YouTube promotes it in the algorithm, and that's super helpful to me. 
If you're listening to this on iTunes or another podcast platform, please give this a five-star rating, as that helps the show grow over there, and it's very much appreciated. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new video, as I upload them almost every single day, and all things natural and supernatural. If you guys are on the go, but don't have YouTube Premium, but you still want to listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller Scary Stories no matter where you are, well, you can download them absolutely free from iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and just about everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. And it's absolutely free to do so. If you guys would like to support the Swamp outside of hitting that like button, giving us a 5-star rating on iTunes, and maybe subscribing, perhaps check out the merch store. I have t-shirts, face masks, hoodies, and so much more. Thank you guys, as always, for the support. If you guys have a story that you guys would like to share in a future video, whether it's from the Sierra Nevada mountains or another mountain range entirely, I'd love to see what you got. Send it in at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that truly help keep this show going on a daily basis. I would love to know in the comments down below what your favorite story tonight was. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.